Hello and welcome to this video on the function of one of the most common rodent poisons, warfarin. The small green blocks of poisoned bait, or small granules in a sachet, are a standard solution to the presence of rodents. These are generally effective at reducing the population of mice and rats over the short term. This effect takes up to a week to be seen, due to a gradual but sure process when the poison is eaten. Unfortunately and controversially, the means by which the rodents die is slow and cruel. For this reason, some animal protection groups promote the use of a snap trap over poison. There are three big poison groups for rodents. Blood thinners, hypercalcemic, and brain swelling. Of these, blood thinners go back the furthest and work on the best understood mechanism. It is so well understood that we can use these blood thinners as medication for humans. Warfarin is used for a simple reason. It is an odorless and tasteless poison. When combined with a compelling bait, Rodents will consume it with ease. Rodents will return to the bait and continue to feed over a period of days until they finally consume a lethal dose. This is generally considered to be about 1 mg per kilogram per day over the course of a week. Excess warfarin is easily excreted in urine and feces. Now that we have a dose and know what warfarin is used for, how does it work? That gets complicated because there are two types of warfarin. These enantiomers are an R and S form. Each is metabolized by different pathways which helps in controlled dosing. Of the two, the S form is nearly three times as potent. Both of these enantiomers of warfarin undergo metabolism in the liver with one of the CYP enzymes. These are normally cytochromes. Whether you have the S form or not, the mechanism of action should roughly follow the form that is described. Warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent reactions. These would normally make clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 biologically active. It further interferes with proteins C, S, and Z. This may not be a very helpful description as it is. Clotting factor 2 is called prothrombin, and this leads to thrombin, a necessary element for the activation of fibrinogen and other clotting factors like platelets and protein C. Clotting factor 7 is proconvertin. This would normally bind to tissue factors and activate clotting factors 9 and 10. Clotting factor 9 is called the Christmas factor and forms part of the clotting factor 10 complex. Clotting factor 10 is called the Stewart Prower factor and this feeds back into the activation of prothrombin. When you start to cut these factors out, you lose functionality of the blood clotting mechanisms. Factor 7 is very important for the extrinsic pathway activation. The extrinsic pathway is what activates when you get injured by outside forces such as bruising. Factor 9 is one of the factors that plays a part in the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is activated by the damaged cells and is a sort of oh shit signal which calls for help. Factor 10 plays a big part in the end of both mechanisms. It does this by changing fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrin is what creates the mesh that fills the void of an injury. Without this, there is a far greater delay and a far less effective resolution 
to an injury. To see this demonstrated in a more adorable fashion, consider watching one of the Cells at Work episodes you see here in the background. They explain what happens, why, and where, and cover this in a less technical but adorable manner. Without the ability to fill voids, or otherwise make up for any damage to the vascular system, the blood can and will diffuse more freely into the body. This can destroy the kidneys in a good scenario. In a bad situation, the GI tract is where the blood goes, along with any other cavity that has a high vascularization, like the nose, mouth and ears. It is uncontrolled hemorrhaging which culminates in severe blood loss and then death. This is why infants are given a vitamin K shot at birth. It helps the blood to clot early on. Although rare, the vitamin K injection prevents a condition called hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. This is caused by blood failing to clot. Without this, the blood may find its way into the brain, which is called encephalopathy. This in turn causes brain damage. Vitamin K allows the blood to clot early on, minimizing the chances of this occurring, and if it does, reducing the duration. As a further interesting point, warfarin can be used to break down clots by interfering with the same pathway. It does not so much break it down as it prevents the clot from being maintained and by reducing the needed materials available. As the clot cannot be maintained, it gradually breaks down, reducing in size over time. Now that you know how it works, the following should come as no surprise. Warfarin is not the best poison. Many of your pest rodents will not consume enough to be killed in the short term. This means that even as they are dying slowly, the rat, mouse, or whatever else may still be able to breed. This leads to the loss of one, but the production of many more. The same dying rodents will find themselves in the most unfortunate of spaces when they die. This can be the wall and roof cavity. Over time, you will know that they are there and regret it. The combination of smell from the rotting animal and the marks remaining from the blood that has come out of the animal are a very undesirable and often overlooked complication of using warfarin. Over time, there is another problem. If the animals do not die in the wall cavities or other inaccessible spaces, they are likely to be found by other animals scavenging their remains. When they are eaten, the animals that have consumed them will be poisoned in turn. The warfarin dose they receive will be substantially reduced, but it is also likely to cause them some degree of harm. Warfarin has declined in commercial popularity due to the increasing resistance and better new generation warfarin type products that have better effects at lower doses. As a rodent poison, warfarin is not ideal. It takes a while to work. You get dead rodents in obscure and difficult to access places. In all honesty, there are better methods available. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.